is Shopify stock finally cheap, especially because you're looking at the stock down around 30% in the last few months and zoom out. It is important to have a long-term perspective. This stock has absolutely crushed it. This is S H O P Shopify stock up around 2,200% this past decade. So this is why it's important to understand two key aspects. And we're going to cover this in this video. The first is, is it fundamentally cheap at the current price? The second is to understand is the structural thesis that is driving these fundamental growth, you know, this fundamental growth still in place. What's driving it? We're going to cover both of those in this video. If you enjoy educational investment videos, please make a point of hitting that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. You're watching Unrivaled Investing. And so when I ask AI ticker chat first month is free, see the link below. What are the negative aspects specific to this earnings update? Looking at their earnings transcript, their earnings press release, and it quickly calls out that it's Due to management's warning about their gross margins for the second quarter, they just reported their first quarter and they're expecting their second quarter margins to decline about 50 basis points, so a half a percent due to Shopify's lower margin payments business. So this is a mix shift. I don't view this really as a structural issue. I view this more as a, you know, maybe a hiccup in the journey. And I think another aspect on why it's down is management's guiding to a high teens percentage growth rate for the second quarter. This is down from what where they reported it in the first quarter of, of low 20s percent, you know, high teens that can be, you know, somewhere between, let's say, 15 to 19 percent. And, you know, management's quick to point out, look, this you you do have a couple of things that that are hurting that growth rate, one of which is they raised pricing last year. And so that that pricing impact, they're going to be lapping that. So that turns into a headwind. The other aspect is they, you know, they are calling out that you you do need to look at it about a three to four percent adjustment from selling their logistics business. So that is also impacting their growth rate. So saying it really would have been closer to low to mid 20s percent growth rate if you consider these different types of adjustments. So I think once again, the, the, this type of data is actually completely free for users at AI ticker chat. Um, so feel free to check that out yourself if you're interested. And this this shows their revenue growth over time. I mean, this this is the reason why the stock did so well for so long, which is just monster year over year revenue growth. Then you see the monster uptick during COVID. And now it's sort of this question of, OK, showed really strong figures this past year or so. But now are we going into a period where this chart, you know, starts going down to here, the, you know, around the 10 to 15 percent over time? What does that look like for this business? Or does it sort of stay around here, this 20 to 30 percent? Because management's now saying, up, oh, it's going to be going, you know, high teens. So that's that I think is is what's causing pressure on the stock. That said, zoom out a little bit, looking at their actual fundamentals. GMV, the gross merchandise value or the volumes that are going across their platform up 23% driven by the same store sales of their existing merchants. So existing merchants selling more goods, more of the inventory on their platform, continuing to grow their merchant base globally. You know, this is an international platform. This is winning, I would I would strongly argue. Talking about first quarter revenue growth of 23%, when you split it up into their two very different products, you have Merchant Solutions, which is predominantly their payments, you know, type of offerings like Shopify Pay, much lower margin. That's growing 20% whereas their subscription solutions. This is more the software solutions. That is up 34%. I believe that's largely due to that price increase. And they are making some changes around the margin, you know, saying, no, you know, the free trials going from three months to one month, you know, things like that to, to manage their costs. But looking at it relative to, let's say, the behemoth Amazon, North America sales for their retail segment grew 12 percent, international grew by 10 percent. So this strongly suggests that Shopify, you know, just going back and forth, uh, Shopify growing 23 percent between 20 and 34 percent, depending on how you're looking at it. And, you know, GMV growth in the 20 percent versus Amazon posting low teens growth. This does suggest that Shopify solution is winning. This is taking share. That's what I like to see. One very astute premium subscriber to Unrivaled Investing commented in our exclusive discord. His name's N. Jishnu. And I think he's done very well in Shopify stock. He was talking about his thesis on why he likes the stock. And this is what I love about our online community, in all honesty, is everyone gets to share perspectives on, you know, what they think about a business. And, you know, if someone, you know, frequently people will go like, hey, Daniel, what do you think of this stock? And I'm like, tell me the thesis. Tell me why, you know, why is the growth obvious? Tell me is management aligned? Like, break it down for me. Let's let's have an honest conversation versus, you know, just, hey, Daniel, tell, tell me if, if I should buy the stock. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you if you should buy the stock. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm personally doing. Um, but he's he's sharing his thesis 
uh, you know, on in terms of Shopify. And he made a really good case on several, you know, s structural tailwinds, secular tailwinds that are benefiting Shopify. One of which is that successful brands want to own the customer relationship versus rely on platform partners. For example, you have Heinz Ketchup sells on Amazon, but do you really want Amazon to see how much Heinz Ketchup, ketchup you're selling and then say, you know what, we really need to undercut them with our own private label solutions, you know, and, and if you are a successful enough brand, you will get the attention of Amazon. You know, it's like the eye of Sauron, you know, it's like Jeff Bezos is watching, um, you know, and he will, he's, he's not really watching now. If, if anything, he's watching from his yacht and he goes, I don't care. Um, but, but the reality is there are people at Amazon that are watching that say, Hey, any particular unit that's growing really well or doing really well, could we compete? Could we offer our own private label? Uh, now consumers win, but the brands do not. And so that is why you, you will likely see more and more brands say, Hey, we want to own the relationship ourselves. So that means having an online presence that's powered potentially by Shopify. Another key aspect for Shopify is that this is really a software company that's enabling merchants with lots of neat features. They're talking about AI enabled editing tools, email capture at point of sale checkout, a lot of functionality that Shopify is looking to add for customers. And this translates into a higher take rate of, or they call it attach rate, which is that for every dollar in terms of the, you know, effectively every dollar going through their platform, what's their take? What's their fig? You know, where, where are they getting, you know, a couple of, you know, dollars for every hundred dollars that's going through their platform? Can Shopify take more and more? And clearly that's, I think the trend over time where you see the most recent quarter is 3.06%. A few years ago is 2.69%. Over time, as they offer more features, I would expect that to go higher. Part of this is also from their Shopify app store, which has a lot of plugins that are directly helpful for customers. Um, and I think a third key aspect uh, that, that will drive Shopify's growth, and you're seeing this now, is the continued success of a lot of these smaller and you know medium-sized brands that should, or you know, if, if you're able to have a brand that's strong enough to challenge one of the larger incumbents, and you say, hey, I'm focusing on my brand. I'm using Shopify to leverage the infrastructure. Uh, you you get those brands. You get that. And that GMV growth is going through Shopify. And so I think you are seeing that here. And you're seeing it with the types of brands that they're winning, like Harry's and Skull Candy. Fun fact, I was an investment banker that helped with Skull Candy many years ago, I think when they're looking to raise capital back when I was a private company. Um, many moons ago. Okay, so where will Shopify go from here? Um, and first of all, in full disclosure, this is not financial advice. Also, just yesterday, Robin, a premium member of Unrivaled Investing, commented that I'm an extremely happy customer of Unrivaled. The information services you provide to me are invaluable. That's a direct quote. This follows another subscriber posting on how I'm currently ahead of my investing goals to retire at age 45. Thanks to Unrivaled. So if you're looking for compelling investment ideas, consider Unrivaled Investing. Come check it out. We also do offer courses on how to think about valuation or how to read financial statements. Looking at, you know, what's going on with Shopify, looking at their fundamentals, you see a business where it's posting very reasonable revenue growth. You know, I'd say even if it decelerates to a teens level, you know, this is a company posting consistent 20% ish growth. It is winning. You see gross margins, even though that it's expected to decline a little bit next quarter, it's very stable, if anything, you know, moving slightly higher over time. So any sort of concerns about the next quarter, I think it's largely a blip. I don't view that as a structural sh shift. I think the structural thesis is still in place. I see management is serious about being fit, lean. They're going from significant losses to now actual profit margins on a real accounting adjusted basis. And not, not even not even adding back significant stock based compensation, which is a real expense. And they are showing that their free cash flow is increasing. By the way, this chart, once again, with AI ticker chat is completely free to use. And you can click on any of these to, to check out uh, their historic financials. And so you can see free cash flow, you know, this company, you know, maybe doing around a billion dollars in free cash flow per year, maybe a little bit more. Um, and the valuation, if you were to look at it on a price to sales basis, has come down significantly. 
you know, this is it, it ran up significantly, but now it's, you know, it's it's down, you know, I round 10 times price to sales on a trailing basis. If you were say on a forward basis, maybe closer to eight, nine times thinking about the valuation around $75 billion market cap around 20% growth this year. That's what I'm assuming around long term margins. I'm assuming 20 to 25%, 15% tax rate, assuming they continue to grow 15 to 20% maybe an N multiple five years from now of around 30 times, give or take. And I'd say the stock is not cheap. I would say if they have exceptional execution, 20% annualized growth for the next five years, 25% profit margins, 35 times earnings multiple five years from now, and that you return the free cash flow to shareholders, uh, then, you know, and keep in mind, this is diluted growth on a per share basis, then what you're talking about is maybe a high teens return over time. Now, keep in mind, this is a hypothetical framework. Of course, stock price can go way higher, way lower. I'd say that's a lot of work to get that type of high teens return. Could it happen? Absolutely. But I, I think as we consider looking at Shopify right now, a few key thoughts. First of all, it has sold off significantly in the last few months. So is it possible you do get some sort of rebound? Absolutely. Anything can happen in the short term. It, you know, in the short term, it really just depends on do you have like a big elephant get interested? And if a big elephant gets interested, you can quickly see things move higher. And then if you know, one elephant goes, oh, I don't like it and runs away, then, you know, things sell off. That's in the short term. You get a lot of noise that way. And a lot of people over extrapolate the noise to think about like, oh, my gosh. And that's why it's important to actually study the fundamentals like we're covering here. So short term, would it surprise me if it rebounded? Not at all. If it gave some sort of rebound, uh, do I think the underlying fundamentals, do I think the underlying structural thesis is still intact? Looking at the results, looking at what management's talking about, looking at how they're executing the new products, how they're innovating, what they're doing, you know, going from a three month free trial to one month trial, this suggests management continues to believe in their product. They're saying, look, we're just crushing it. We're still growing. We're, we're growing 20% plus GMV. We're clearly taking market share. They clearly, I would argue they're, they're much closer to unrivaled. That's, you know, so this, those are the data points I'd look at. So a fundamental thesis, I'd argue still in check. That key question of, and that, that was the lead of this video is, is this fundamentally cheap? I don't think so. I don't think you could say like, oh, this is dirt cheap. You know, the, the numbers, when you look at this, don't jump off the page and I'll, I'll show it again. Don't jump off the page where you could say like, oh, this is definitely, you know, very high probability that this could be up, uh, you know, hundreds of percent in the next five years. I don't, I don't think the numbers jump off the page that way. Look, of, of course things, you know, you can always get the animal spirits where, where things do go up that. So there's, there's never the, any guarantees in finance. There's never any definite. Um, but what I am saying is it looking at this, looking at this framework, I don't, I don't see this as dirt cheap or cheap. I, I see this as, Possibly if, if I had to assign like a, an assessment of, you know, is, is it cheap? Is it fair? Is it expensive? I would probably put it between fair and expensive. I'd probably put it somewhere in between there where it really just depends on could they execute really well from here. And in fairness, like, look, if you buy great companies and I'd argue they're shaping up to be one, even though I, I really didn't like what happened with their logistics previous deal where they bought it and then they sold it and they recognize a sizable loss. I don't like huge impairments that effectively shows that you wasted shareholder capital. I don't like that. That said, as an investor, a lot of people do benefit over time saying, look, just buy something at a fair value. As long as the thesis is there, you'll, you'll do fine over time. So I personally, I'm not pulling the trigger on Shopify currently. Maybe that's a mistake. We'll see. Um, I'm not, I, I don't think this is in that cheap realm where I'd personally like to go bargain shopping. I'd love to hear your view in case you feel like I'm missing something. Absolutely love to hear it in the comments below. Thanks so much for tuning into Unrivaled Investing.